Today's story is called A Snake in the House. Before we begin reading, on page 56, I want us to think about cause and effect. The cause of an event is why it happens. The effect is what happens. For example, here is a cause. A spider crawled across the floor. The effect, mom screamed. Another cause, a snake was in the house. Can you think of an effect that you might have if you found a snake in your house? Page 57. A Snake in the House. Realistic Fiction by Millie Howard. Illustrated by Linda Slattery. Think as you read. What cause and effect relationships can you find in the story? What do you predict will be the effect of having a snake in the house? Page 58. A Pet for the Summer. Dad! Dad! The screen door slammed behind Lisa as she ran to the driveway. Mr. Peroni stopped the car. What a welcome, he said smiling. What's going on? Mom said I could keep one of the classroom pets for the summer if it's all right with you, Lisa said hurriedly. We just have time to catch Mrs. Allen before she leaves. Hold on a minute, Mr. Peroni frowned. Today's the last day of school. Why didn't we hear about this earlier? Page 59. I thought Paul Barlett was going to keep Barney, Lisa replied, and all the other animals were taken. Paul's parents decided to go away for the summer, so he called me a few minutes ago. If we hurry, we can get to the school in time. All right, let's go, Mr. Peroni said, reaching across to open the car door for Lisa. She slid into the seat, and Mr. Peroni backed the car out of the driveway. Now, you're sure it's okay with your mother? Yes, sir. Mom just said I would have to take care of Barney myself. Lisa leaned forward, peering out the window. Mr. Peroni slowed for the stop sign at 5th and Oak Streets. Do you know how to care for this Barney animal? Oh, yes, sir, Lisa replied without taking her eyes from the road. Snakes are easy to take care of anyway. Snakes! Mr. Peroni stepped on the brake and turned to look at Lisa. Snakes! Your mother agreed to let you keep a snake? In the garage, not in the house, Lisa said hastily. I promised to keep him in a tank in the garage. Page 60. Mr. Peroni shook his head, then turned left on 5th Street. Lisa, do you know why your mother is afraid of snakes? She was bitten by a snake when she was little, wasn't she? Yes, she was very sick, Lisa. She has been afraid of snakes ever since. Mr. Peroni turned onto Elm Street. I want you to remember that and be careful with your snake. I will, Dad. Barney isn't poisonous. You know, the school wouldn't let us keep a dangerous snake, Lisa said earnestly. Mr. Peroni laughed. Ha! <laughs> I wouldn't think so. He stopped the car in the school parking lot. You run ahead and see if Mrs. Allen is still there. I'll park the car and catch up with you. Thanks, Dad! Lisa slid out and slammed the door. By the time Mr. Peroni reached the classroom, Lisa was hanging over a glass tank in the back. Mr. Peroni nodded to Mrs. Allen. I see Lisa reached you in time. Looks like we'll have a guest for the summer. You don't know how glad I am to see you, Mrs. Allen said. No one wanted to take Barney. I didn't know what I was going to do. Page 61. No one wanted a snake, Mr. Peroni asked. Oh, the problem wasn't the children, it was the parents, she said, leading Mr. Peroni to the back. A lot of people just don't care for boa constrictors. Boa, <clears throat> Mr. Peroni coughed, leaning over Lisa's shoulder to look at the snake coiled in the heavy tank. He's just a baby boa, Dad, Lisa said. Just look at him. Lisa, did you tell your mother that Barney is a boa constrictor? Lisa looked up, startled. I don't remember, Dad. I told her he was a snake and that he was a baby, but I don't remember if I said he was a boa or not. We always called him Barney here at school. She bit her lip and looked at Barney. I'll understand if you can't take Barney, Mrs. Allen began. Page 62. No, Mr. Peroni said, looking at Lisa's disappointed face. Lisa said she would take good care of Barney, and I'm going to hold her to her word. Lisa's head flew up. You mean... I mean, we had better get Barney loaded before Mrs. Allen runs us out of here, Mr. Peroni said. Oh, boy! Lisa took hold of one end of the tank. Mr. Peroni took the other end, and they carried the heavy tank to the car. 
When they got home, Mr. Peroni and Lisa carried Barney into the garage. Then Mr. Peroni went inside while Lisa made Barney comfortable. A little later, Lisa's mother and father came out together. Lisa looked up happily. Come and look, Mom. Barney's looking the place over. Mrs. Peroni came a few steps farther and peered at the cage. Barney's tongue flickered as he moved closer to the glass. Mrs. Peroni took a quick step backward. Beautiful, isn't he? She said quietly. What's he doing? Just smelling you, Lisa replied. Mrs. Peroni gasped. He can smell me? Page 63. Sure, Lisa said. He puts his tongue out to test the air, then puts it on the roof of his mouth. That's the way he smells. Smells? Mrs. Peroni backed away. I think I'll go check on my cake. Lisa watched her mother hurry back inside the house. Don't you want to watch Barney climb up the tree branch? She asked, disappointed. Page 64. Mr. Peroni smiled. I guess your mother has had enough introduction to Barney for today. Oh, Lisa said. I forgot. Just don't forget to take good care of that snake. I don't want it getting loose and worrying your mother, Mr. Peroni said. Oh, Barney can't get loose, Lisa replied, giving the wire screen a little tap. He is safe in here. Barney stopped climbing and looked at Lisa lazily. Page 65. The next morning, Lisa was up before everyone else. Her mother blinked when Lisa opened the kitchen door. Where have you been? She asked, surprised. Out in the garage, checking on Barney, Lisa replied, sniffing. I smell pancakes. Mr. Peroni put the newspaper down as Lisa slid into her seat at the table. Mr. Peroni winked at his wife. First day of vacation, and she didn't have to be called to come down. I wonder if we could borrow Barney for the school year. Ah, Dad. Lisa grinned. I just wanted to make sure nothing had bothered him during the night. Mrs. Peroni looked at Lisa in disbelief. What would bother a three-foot snake? A big dog, something like that, Lisa replied seriously. Dad, Mrs. Allen fed Barney yesterday, but he'll need something else in a few days. Could I have three dollars? Whoa now, Lisa, Mr. Peroni shook his head. You said you were going to take care of Barney yourself. That includes feeding him. Well, I guess I could catch some mice, Lisa said thoughtfully. Page 66. Mice? We don't have mice, Mrs. Peroni set the juice down a little too hard. Lisa wiped the spilled juice with a napkin. I know, Mom, but someone must have mice around here. Mr. Peroni chuckled. What are you going to do? Conduct a house-to-house -house survey? Lisa grinned. I guess that wouldn't work, but all I need is two. I could raise the rest. Mrs. Peroni shuddered. What else do snakes eat? She asked hastily. Birds, squirrels, things like that, Lisa replied. But Mrs. Allen always fed him white mice, just like the scientists do in laboratories. Mrs. Peroni hesitated for a moment. Then she said slowly, I wanted to do some painting and cleaning this summer, and the garage really needs to be cleaned out. I guess Lisa could earn some money helping me. <gasps> Thanks, Mom! Lisa beamed. You're a lifesaver. What else could I say? Mrs. Peroni smiled. Raising mice in the garage? I should hope not. Lisa thought her problems were over, but she was wrong. A few weeks later, Barney refused to eat his weekly meal. Page 67. Lisa's mother was watching her try to coax Barney to eat when Mr. Peroni drove up after work. Dad, Barney's sick, Lisa called. Come and look. Mr. Peroni closed the car door and walked over to Barney's tank. Maybe he isn't hungry, he said, tapping the glass. Barney didn't move. I don't know. He just doesn't look right, Lisa said. Maybe he's getting ready to shed his skin, Mrs. Peroni suggested. He's certainly grown a lot in a few weeks. If he were shedding his skin, his eyes would be milky, Lisa said. Look at them. They're as clear as glass. Page 68. Mrs. Peroni glanced at Lisa's worried face. Would you feel better if you and your dad took him to the vet? Oh, yes, Lisa replied. Well, let's load his tank into the car, said Mr. Peroni. Dr. Lee took one look at Barney and knew exactly what was wrong with him. Your pet has mites under his scales, she told them. It's not serious now, but without proper care, he could die. What can I do? Lisa asked. First of all, clean his tank with ammonia. Then 
put all of Barney except his nose under lukewarm water for 10 or 15 minutes, said the vet. Most of the mites should drown and fall off. Will he be cured after I give him his bath? Lisa asked. You'll need more than one bath to kill all the mites, said the vet. You must give him two baths a day for the first two weeks. Then give him one bath a day for a week. Then will he be cured? Lisa asked. Not yet, said Dr. Lee. Wait three or four days for the mites' eggs to hatch. Then repeat the treatment. I'll give you a list of the medicines that you will need. When Lisa and her father got home, they explained Barney's problem to Mrs. Peroni. In the tub. You want to give the snake a bath in my tub. I'll use my bathroom, Mom, Lisa explained, and I'll take him right back to the garage. Please, Mom, I don't want him to die. Well, all right, but don't you bathe in that tub until the snake is well and the tub is scrubbed clean. Fine, Mom. I don't get too dirty anyway, Lisa said happily. That's not what I meant, young lady. Mom gave a helpless laugh. You will use our bathroom. Aw, Lisa said, and left to get Barney. Mrs. Peroni disappeared into the kitchen and did not come out until Barney was back in the garage. Page 70. Each day, Lisa washed Barney. When his bath was over, Lisa carried him back to the garage. After the first few days, Mrs. Peroni got used to seeing Barney looped over Lisa's arm twice a day. One day, Lisa was surprised to see her mom in the doorway watching her bathe Barney. Doesn't he try to get loose? She asked, staring at Barney's head firmly held in Lisa's grasp. No, Barney's tame, Lisa said, rubbing Barney's head with her free hand. He sort of likes it. Mrs. Peroni watched, fascinated. How long does that thing actually grow? Probably five or six feet, Lisa answered. They don't get too big. Six feet? Her mother shuddered. Then she asked with sudden suspicion, How fast does he grow? Ah, oh, Mom, he's not going to get that long, Lisa replied. Not this summer, anyway. Good, Mrs. Peroni brightened. She even gave Barney a smile. Barney flickered his tongue as if in response. See, Mom, Lisa said, he likes you. Really? Mrs. Peroni looked at the snake curiously. I'm not sure I can say the same. Page 71. A few days later, Mrs. Peroni had a ladies' meeting at her house. She rushed around all day preparing for it. Around a quarter to four, she called Lisa. Have you given Barney his bath yet? Not yet, she answered. Why? Why? Because I'm having a meeting at four today. Hurry up and get Barney out of the way. Yes, ma'am. Lisa hurried to the garage to get Barney. She had Barney wrapped around her shoulders and had just reached the kitchen door when the first car drove up. Lisa hurried inside and raced upstairs to the bathroom. Phew! she said to Barney as she closed the door. That was close. Page 72. Soon Barney was floating happily in lukewarm water, his head safely in Lisa's hand. Lisa stroked his head and talked softly to him. It was after four when Barney was bathed and dried. Now how am I going to get you back downstairs? Lisa asked thoughtfully. The ladies are all in the living room. Barney coiled happily around the clothes hamper. You aren't the easiest thing to hide, Lisa added. Barney rubbed his head against the top of the wicker hamper. Lisa chuckled. All right. She opened the top of the hamper. Get in. Barney slithered over the top of the hamper and disappeared into the clothes. Lisa opened the door and peeked over the railing. The room was full of ladies. Lisa sighed and went back to the bathroom. She opened the hamper. Barney was coiled up in the clothes. Lisa closed the lid and sat down. She had to think of a way to get Barney out to the garage. I could take the hamper to the garage, she thought. Barney is asleep and the hamper doesn't weigh much. Sure, it'll work. She picked up the hamper and opened the door. Halfway down the stairs, she looked across the room and saw her mother's face. Lisa moved her mouth without actually speaking. It's Barney. Page 73. Mrs. Peroni nodded and stayed where she was. She watched every step Lisa made. She looked like she was holding her breath. Lisa stepped off the last stair and started across the wooden floor. The hamper wasn't too heavy, but it was more awkward to carry than she had expected. She was doing fine, though, until Mrs. Perkins looked up and saw Mrs. Peroni's face. Anna, she exclaimed, whatever is the matter? At that moment, Lisa stepped on a throw rug. The rug slipped and Lisa sprawled on the floor. The hamper slid right into the middle of the room. I'll get it, I'll get it, Lisa yelled as several ladies got up to help. She 
was too late. Three feet of shaken boa constrictor flowed from the overturned hamper and slithered across the floor. Page 74. Screams echoed in the room as ladies scrambled in all directions. Lisa dashed after Barney as he disappeared under the couch. It's only a boa constrictor, her mother called to the excited ladies. Only a boa constrictor, Mrs. Perkins' voice carried over the noise. Ada, what are you thinking about letting your child keep a boa constrictor in the house? It's only a baby, Mrs. Peroni replied rather sharply. It won't hurt you. Now calm down while I help Lisa. Most of the ladies gathered on the other side of the room, but a few came to help. Page 75. One knelt beside Lisa and her mother. It doesn't squeeze, does it? No, Barney's tame, and anyway, he's been fed, Lisa replied. If you just chase him over here, I can catch him. Mrs. Peroni and some of the other ladies carefully shooed Barney back to Lisa's side of the couch. Lisa picked Barney up and wrapped him around her arm. There, didn't I tell you he was tame, Lisa said proudly. And he belongs in the garage, not in the house, Mrs. Peroni said firmly. Out, Lisa. As Lisa left the room, she could hear the ladies' excited comments. A boa constrictor? Anna, you're amazing. They're fascinating. Did you know they can swallow an animal larger than their own heads? Yes, Mrs. Peroni replied dryly. I had noticed. But just imagine keeping one in your house loose like that. Doesn't it make your skin crawl? Well, Lisa heard her mother say hesitantly, you get used to it after a while. Barney isn't so bad. Why, the other day. Page 76. Lisa grinned and opened the back door. You hear that, Barney? She said to the boa constrictor. You just might not have to stay in the garage all summer after all. Page 77. Think and discuss. Now that we've read A Snake in the House, let's think about some questions. Number one. What did you predict would happen with a snake in the house? Was your prediction correct? Number two, what caused mom to be afraid of snakes? Can you go back in your book and look for text evidence that shows why mom was afraid of snakes? Number three, what caused mom to change her mind about Barney? And again, can you find where, meaning what page number, or where is an exact quote that shows what caused mom to change her mind about Barney? And finally, vocabulary to remember. Actually, echoed, laboratories, awkward, flickered, poisonous, coax, hamper, slithered, disappointed, hesitantly, suspicion, earnestly, introduction, and treatment.